something I do now in a nucleus herd is going to take three to five years for me to see downstream. And so patience is sometimes hard and, yep. and the, to make one change and wait three years and not make another change in between is, is really very difficult um, in production systems. And so I think too, some is just, you know, trying to watch for the change is, is hard to do. You know, disease comes in and, and leaves and diets change, right? Corn prices go up and we change our diets and just changing out our diets can change our vitamin levels and, and inherent mineral levels. And so um, I think you bring some really interesting points. I think we still kind of struggle with how we put it all together, right? Yeah, and I think it goes into the point that we need some different tools. We need some different scientists out there, um, tools and scientists, people who can dig into the data and the numbers and really understand it. They may not understand production, but you team that person with somebody who has boots on the ground and can talk a little statistics and math and get the grasp of it. And I think that's where magic happens. So developing a very diverse workforce instead of the traditional nutritionist type of PhD program we have, I think you know, goes back to the student and, and the employee development. And I like the Google perspective as well, instead of, you know, hiring for bachelor's degrees, they're hiring people with like Python certificates if they just need a coding person. So I think when we talk about tools, that's people and technologies, you know, there's a lot of things we measure in the blood, in the milk, um, you know, measured minerals and hair, things like that, non-invasive things, you know, the saliva test and things. I think things we're already doing, can we find new things to look at? New, what we're going to call biomarkers, I guess, is what the term is. And that could be very broad. But, you know, is there new tools that we need to develop to, to understand this better? Zeralinone, for instance, if microtoxin is a continuous issue, is there a tool that we can make it a lot cheaper and kind of know what's going on on farm every day and, and track that, right? And then make some decisions. But we don't have a lot of the pieces to the puzzle to solve problems. It's like cell mortality is a very complex issue. And we, we say genetics is one component, feet, nutrition is another, guilt development's another, and, and so on. And, you know, you get into epigenetics and all that and, uh, f you know, fetal programming and stuff. It, it's complicated. And so we need to think of the tools we need, need to create and have on farm. It can't just be some million dollar machine sit in somebody's laboratory. It's like, we need to have practical tools and assessments that we can do on farm. And then we need somebody sitting with a million dollar server or whatever, spitting data back out, telling us what direction we need to go into. So machine learning, I guess, would be fit into that as well, so.